Leland, you got a couple of things happening that we've all noticed. One, the Biden administration seems to be putting pressure on Israel to slow the ground invasion, yet fully knowing that a ceasefire will give Hamas more time to arm itself and get ready for a ground invasion. It's a delicate balance. What do you make about what the White House has done so far? And is Israel listening as we feel as though this may be more imminent than it has been? Well, Israel has listened so far. I think from a domestic political perspective, domestic to the United States, the Biden administration is starting to feel a lot of pressure from the left wing of the Democratic Party on its support of Israel and on the optics uh, that are coming out of Gaza. And the they are embracing, the White House is starting to embrace this idea that the humanitarian disaster inside of Gaza is the responsibility of the Israelis, or at least caused by the Israelis, rather than the responsibility of Hamas. And it's interesting to track uh, the arc, if you will, of how President Biden's talked about this and how uh, members of his administration have talked about this, because what's changed is what we've seen on the streets and at universities across America, which is this increase in support for Hamas. And I know people like to uh, name these rallies pro-Palestinian rallies. Well, uh, we need to call them what they are, which is they are pro-terror or pro-Hamas rallies. We know that because of what they're chanting, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That means wiping out the state of Israel. Uh, and I think we'd be wise to look, and I know the White House is looking at the polling that shows uh, 18 to 24-year-olds in America, roughly 50 percent, uh, say they support Hamas over Israel um, in this current conflict. And I think that's a big part of what we're seeing right now in terms of asking for this humanitarian pause and putting this pressure on the Israelis. I'm so glad you brought that up because we played a soundbite a moment ago of the president saying Hamas does not represent Palestine, does not re represent the Palestinians. He said it twice even in that soundbite. Where is this getting lost in translation for those young Americans who are protesting? Well, look, I spent four years on the ground uh, in the Middle East. I've been to Gaza. Um, the, pre the president, I know, likes to say that Hamas doesn't represent most of the Palestinians. Um, that's not really true from what I've seen on the ground. And obviously what we've seen is we watch the celebrations uh, of Hamas and the celebrations of what they did inside Gaza and inside the West Bank. And I would end with this. Uh, the president can't have it both ways. If Hamas doesn't represent the vast majority of Palestinians, and the Palestinians have had almost 10 years, longer than that now, uh, almost 20 years since Hamas took over to, over to overthrow them, and Hamas is responsible for what's happening in the Gaza Strip, then the best people to save the Palestinians is the Israelis who want to get rid of Hamas. Um, you can't have it both ways. That the Hamas doesn't represent the vast majority of the Palestinians, but leaving Hamas in power is okay. Um, and that seems to be what the White House is trying to grapple with, um, the reality on the ground is well known, um, that the people who are suffering the most under Hamas are the Palestinians who are unable to overthrow it. Uh, Israel is the, op is the only option to do that, uh, but doing so uh, is war, is conflict. Uh, Hamas is not going to give up uh, easily. And, I, and I, I wonder about that change in tone from the president, uh, from saying largely that Hamas is responsible for the suffering of the, Israel, of the Gazans, uh, to now somehow sort of intimating that that, at least some part, uh, is the responsibility of Israel. And you have to talk about Iran. And Leland, we have to discuss mm -hmm. attacks that we've already seen against U.S. personnel in places like Syria, in Iraq. Why aren't we seeing more action against Iran. We've heard the rhetoric increase. We heard the Secretary of State say, we don't want to battle with Iran. And if you attack American forces, we will swiftly respond. Talk mm -hmm. about this situation and the complexity of it. Well, there's not really a, a complexity to it. The, the Middle East is a little bit like the sandbox at school, right? Uh, if the bully uh, doesn't get punched in the nose, he's going to keep taking your lunch money. And the worst thing you can do is threaten the bully and then not back those threats up. And the Iranians are watching, right? They they launched a couple of drone attacks, uh, injured about 20 plus Americans. Some uh, they they gave brain brain in injuries to with the with the explosions, um, and yet no response from the Middle East from the United States. So uh, you heard Antony Blinken's swift and decisive resp uh, response. You heard yesterday uh, President Biden warn uh, the Iranians, warn the Ayatollah personally. What did the Iranians do? They had their militias launch more attacks 
uh, against U.S. troops just to see what would happen. Uh, what did the United States do? Nothing. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.